and a half years ago, I was uh, sitting at Starbucks, reading an, on an article about a cartoonist. His plan is to give up the internet since it was slowly taking over his life. It was a, per it was a problem I would uh, personally relate to. And the online article was linked from a website called Hacker News. And I'll tell you something about Hacker News since it was relatively important in the context that we will be talking about. So hacking news is, uh, has nothing to do with the term hacking portrayed in media like you know, hacking the computers, uh, breaking security, things that have nothing to do with uh, hacking like that. So the hacking, hacking news is more to do with uh, hacking as a shortcut or a clever way or a non-conventional way to achieve something in any aspect of life. And another notable thing about Hacker News is it has a community of all the smartest people from the technology industry who would submit and vote for content all around the internet, so it doesn't really have a content of its own. And I love reading Hacker News, and I recommend it to anyone who's working on a startup or from the technology industry. Anyway, go back to the article I was reading, giving up the internet. It was a good idea. It sounds appealing to me, but there was one thing I would miss, miss the most, which was reading Hacker News. And then I remember staring at a stack of magazine in front of me, and I got this idea. What if I could turn Hacker News into a print magazine? You know, I, I imagine a magazine full of interesting content from all over the internet, delivered to my house every single month. I wouldn't need to get online to read all those interesting articles. How wonderful is that, right? So I set out a journey to make it happen. I, rem I remember at that time, I have doubts myself. Because it's, it's a crazy idea, right? It's like putting out all the free stuff on the internet into a magazine and ask people to buy it. And since the, art, since the magazine wouldn't have any content on its own, and I have to ask for permission from the people who I would get their content from, so what if people say no to me? What if the contributor doesn't want their article to be republished in the magazine for free? What if the people wouldn't buy a magazine like that? And this is my personal favorite. What if people laugh at me? And I'm at this stage where we call the imaginary rejection, where the rejection only happens in your head. And the only way to get out of this imaginary rejection stage is to try and actually get rejected. And in the next hour or two, I did just that. I created a website uh, with a brief description of my new project, and I posted it online asking for feedback. I emailed 10 of the potential contributors asking if I could get a permission to reprint the article for a magazine which hadn't existed yet. And I think there's an important lesson to be learned here. And a lot of people I've seen, even when they conceive a good idea, a great idea, they would change the world, change their life, they stop when they doubt themselves. Instead of giving a chance for people to say no, they say no to themselves. So how did it turn out for me? Five out of ten of the people actually reply back and say yes. They would love to be featured in whatever new magazine they're, they're doing. And the, the response from the crowd was generally encouraging. So still, there were some people who were not against this idea when I just got started. The doctors. And I remember I there was this uh, suggestion posted on user voice, where's this website where you can gather user feedback and people would vote uh, which feedback is the most important for this idea. And one of the top voted feedback goes like this. And it was scarier than it looked right now. I remember when I first seeing it, it was like a dark and ominous voice speaking to you. Give up this ridiculous idea. I think no matter what you're doing, no matter what you do, uh, you, hold, you always have people like that telling you. They may be your friend, they may be your family, or in my case, 
a total stranger. I, I mean, I don't even know you guys. Why, why are you so against it? And the only way to deal with them, the only way to shut them up, is to ship. Instead of arguing with them, is to deliver the product. Is to deliver the finished product in front of the world. And the next two months, I ship. I ship the first print issue of the magazine. And I will talk something about shipping. It's easier to say than done, to be honest. At that time, um, I don't know anyone from the print industry. I know nothing about magazine. In short, I have no idea what I'm doing. And you know what I can do? I asked a few of my designer friends, you know, asking if you know they would like to do some profit sharing. They would design a magazine for me. Um, they say no. They they were just not interested or busy. I remember email design agency asking for you know, quotes. You know, if I can contract them to design a magazine. But they're just so expensive and out of bu my budget, out of budget of bootstrapper like me. So I know I have to start from scratch, and I did. I went out and bought every single book I could find about designing magazine. I read every single article. I went through everything I could about setting typefaces, things like that. I spent a couple of. Uh, weeks just going through tutorials on the internet about how to use a design software. And most importantly, I gave myself a deadline. And trust me, deadline works wonder. So instead of dragging on you know, just forever, just dragging on forever, I gave myself two months to finish. And turns out, two months was just enough. So in June 2010, I've launched. And this is how the first issue looks like. The first issue of Hacker Monthly. And I remember the first issue wasn't perfect. Far from it. Wasn't perfect at all. It was littered with spelling error, grammatical mistake, punctuation error that you wouldn't normally see in any magazine. So the ad turned out to be a total failure or a laughing stock of the internet. It come up with a magazine like that. Uh, it's just the opposite. You now people turn out to love the magazine. They, they were impressed for the fact that I got the magazine out. And some of the readers were so generous, they even offered to proofread the magazine for free. Imagine that. Your own readers want to proofread your own magazine for free. So I think it's fine. It's fine to get the product out. As long as it's out, it's fine if it's imperfect. I remember the first iPad which I still keep on with me, has a uh, horrible resolution, it's so slow, and has a crappy camera. Wait, it doesn't even have a camera. And turn, look at how it turned out today. And fast forward three months after I launched, I was burning out. I remember I was uh, still working as a freelance programmer at that time, and I was spending a lot of energy working on the magazine. And it was like holding up two full-time jobs. And I know I have to let one go. And I fell in love making the magazine. I love contacting other authors, which are prominent figures from the tech industry. I get to contact them and talk to them. And it makes me a lot of friends. I love designing every single article, putting them together, spending hours and hours making it look great. So it's an easy choice, right? You know, just give up programming, just give up freelancing and focusing on doing Hacker Monthly full time. But it wasn't that easy. There was this problem. I wasn't making enough money. Hacker Monthly wasn't making enough money as an income source for me to support myself and my family. So at that time, Hacker Monthly has two editions. A print edition, which is a paper that you can hold in your hand, and a digital edition, which you can read on your laptop, on your iPad, or your Kindle. And we sold hundreds of print copies every month, which obviously doesn't make a lot of money. But we have tens of thousands of downloads from the digital editions. 
So I thought the only way I can move forward is to charge for digital edition. And it was a tough call because I started from free. The digital, edi the digital edition was for free for the first three issues. And I was trying to charge halfway. I remember spending countless nights you know, struggling to make a decision. But I knew I had to do it. I had to move forward. So I made a decision to charge for digital subscription and digital edition. And expectedly, um, many people weren't happy about that. But I knew I had to do it. And looking back right now, it was the best decision I ever made. There's this one thing about making money from doing what you love. Uh, I've seen a lot of people, myself included, uh, think if we are enjoying ourselves, we shouldn't get paid. I think there's no shame in doing what you in in making money from doing what you love. In fact, I think this is the best you could ask for. So today, Hacker Monthly is in its 30th issues. We have 6,000 subscribers worldwide, mostly in Silicon Valley and the US. And we have shipped to over 60 countries. Um, before I finish this talk, I would like to leave with you this picture which I find particularly inspiring. Start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. So no matter how crazy your ideas seem, no matter how many people are against you, no matter how, what the naysayer says, get started. Ask, learn, shoot, keep going. Thank you.